What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the TSV Sports Show. Today, I got my guys with me, Jasper Lindsay, Marco Milani, and Alvin Chang. I'm your host, Daniel Archuleta. And a special Thursday show brings a preview show for the weekend ahead. But first, we will start with tonight's Thursday night football game between the Chargers and the Raiders. The Chargers are coming off a 20-17 to win over the Falcons this past weekend. And the Raiders, they have split their past two games, the win against the Jets, and a rather bitter loss to the Colts last week by a score of 44-27. to The Raiders are still looking for a wild card spot. The Chargers at this point, they're just playing for pride, maybe even saving Anthony Lynn's job. Let's talk to Jasper, our resident Raider fanatic. Any chance we might see an upset tonight between the Chargers? Because after all, we are talking about the Raiders and they are about as inconsistent as possible at times. Uh, I think that's very much possible, especially with the way the last matchup played out. I mean, it honestly, it came down to that catch. Uh, and Isaiah Johnson made a couple of nice plays. Uh, I don't really think the Chargers are going to play for Anthony Lynn. They want to see him gone as much as everyone else in that fan base. Um, but I could see this game easily going the Chargers' way. I mean, the Raiders are losing. Uh, the Raiders have lost big names on defense to concussions. You got Nicholas Morrow out, Jonathan Abrams, and Damon Arnett. Cleland Farrell still with a bad shoulder, and Henry Ruggs is on the COVID list. So the Raiders are down some guys, especially with a new defensive system coming in after they fired Paul Gunther, which probably should have happened a little bit sooner in the season. But uh, he's got some family connections with the Grudens and. They weren't willing to do that. But, uh, yeah, this could definitely be a big game for Justin Herbert in prime time. Um, and I expect it to be high scoring and close to the end. Yeah, like you said, with Paul Gunter going down on the defensive side, they are missing a lot of names. This has a possibility of being a big shootout. Unfortunately, no Henry Ruggs, like you did say. But I do like Hunter Renfro. Um, I do see a big game out of Nelson Aguilar. And we all know what Waller and Jacobs provide for this for this offense. But it all, it all comes down to how Derek Carr is playing at the end of the day because this is the Raiders. Um, but I also see a good game out of Herbert and Eckler on the other side. And Keenan Allen, he's always going to put up at least 80 yards plus. Cal guy. Um, it's almost a guarantee. So expect a bit of offensive game tonight. And hopefully you never know, Thursday night games late into the season, never always that great. I expect a good one tonight. Uh, let's also talk about one of the Saturday games we have on the NFL docket this weekend. We have two games. We'll talk about the late one, though, between the Panthers and the Packers. And it's almost the same story as tonight's game. Panthers, not really a whole lot to play with, but the Packers at home still fighting for that one seed with the Saints. Uh, let's hear from Marco. What are you expecting from the Packers this this week, um, Aaron Rodgers possibly looking to cement his MVP status. There were some calls going around this week, Daniel, that saying like one, I think it's like one not done, but they won the NFC, NFC North, but they're still not done. They, like you said, they still have to fight for the number one seed. Um, Rodgers is look, Rodgers, is, excuse me, the Rodgers and Devontae connection is looking deadly and it's going to be hard for, I think it's going to be hard for the uh, Panthers to defend. Um, in terms of every, everybody else, um, I'm expecting a, a big game out of the defense. Obviously, um, Kingsley Kiki has been doing good. Um, and Preston, and this is that, just the entire defensive line has really showed up. And the secondary has showed up uh, in waves this year. Um, hopefully, we'll see a recovery game from Shannon Sullivan as well. But I'm expecting a really, really good game from the um, Packers. And I'm just really just expecting some good football, like I usually do in these games. Yeah, for sure. You know, never take away from Carolina. You know, we have seen them fought. They did lose that kind of back and forth game to Drew Locke, of all players, and the Broncos uh, last weekend. But never count out Carolina. Christian McCaffrey still unseen, whether he not he plays or not. Matt Rule listing him as doubtful so far. As in, and as much as we want to see McCaffrey on the field him possibly coming back this season might not be the best option for anyone in that situation. But it should be a good one. Also, Bills, Broncos, uh, Saturday, that's the first game. Also another intriguing matchup. But the game of the weekend for sure comes on Sunday uh, in the 130, 130 window between the Chiefs and the Saints, that game being played at the Superdome. To anyone who wants to take it, 
any any chance we see Mahomes and company just bro, blow the gates off of New Orleans, or does Taysom Hill have anything left to uh, provide, maybe for the one seed? Um, I think I mean the Saints. It comes down to their defense. If their defense can hold Mahomes at bay, which not many defensive have, even in their loss to the Raiders, they found a way to score. I mean, he, Mahomes got intercepted three times last week and still put up 300 plus yards and three touchdowns. So. He's just a monster. Uh, there's not a whole lot you can do to stop him. Um, but I think with the Saints, it definitely comes down to the offense. We could see a Jameis appearance this weekend if Taysom doesn't come through. But uh, look for the Saints to try and bounce back after a tough loss to the Eagles last week. Yeah, I know. Jameis Winston, nice nice place in your heart, Jasper, in terms of coming in and possibly making some noise this late into the NFL season. Um, but like you, you hit on it. Can his defense stop Mahomes and company? Who knows at this point? You know, like we mentioned, Aaron Rodgers possibly cementing his status for MVP. Mahomes, he's actually the favorite right now if you're into, you know, Vegas odds and all that stuff. But you never know. You, Cameron Jordan looking to possibly get some sacks. Um, Gardner Johnson looking for some picks, interceptions. You never know. Um, Maybe them playing in the dome, anything you know. At this point, you're just looking for some sort of advantage against Mahomes. Maybe uh, the lights go out again. Yeah, maybe no. the lights go out. <laughs> you never know. But game of the week, I'll I'll for sure be watching. Even though um, got some other stuff going on Sunday, but for sure, TV will be turned on for that one. Big game, Chiefs Saints. Um, Let's also talk some college football. It is championship weekend. You can check out our boy Jasper's, his story on the Skyline View. He wrote a nice piece on all the Power Five Conference championship games. Go check it out. But we're here now. We can talk to the guy who wrote it. What is your top game you're looking forward to this weekend? My top game is actually a game I didn't write about. It's uh, UL Lafayette versus uh, Coastal Carolina. That game's going to be physical. It's going to be fun. Uh, you got athletes on both sides of the ball, and it's it's gonna be a shootout. It's gonna be fun. Take the over. Um, another game I want to talk about is Boise State versus San Jose State. Finally got a Bay Area team representing the conference championship weekend. It's been a while. I don't think uh, I think Stanford might have been the last one, um, but that game's gonna be fun. San Jose State has proven this season that they can run with the big dogs in the Mountain West, taking down Nevada a week ago. Uh, and Boise State has been largely inconsistent, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but I think the game of the weekend is obviously Clemson versus Notre Dame. This has huge implications for both the playoff and teams on the outside like Texas A&M and Florida. Um, I like Notre Dame in this game. I think their defense has been really good, and they prove that they can take on an offense with firepower time and time again this year. I think Ian Book is underrated and probably should be in the Heisman conversation. Um, but it comes down to him. Can he carry this team? Uh, and lastly, we're going to talk about, uh, obviously, Northwestern, Ohio State. Um, this game's going to be close for a while, but I think Ohio State, it's just a matter of time until Justin Fields gets going and pulls away. Yeah, it's, and, you know, I'll stick with that Mountain West championship game. And, you know, anyone that knows me knows I've been very critical of the Santa Clara ban, Santa Clara County ban on contact sports. Maybe it's all for the best in the end, but you know they are playing. The, if if everything went well, you know San Jose State would be hosting that game in San Jose, but instead now it's got to be held in Vegas, their temporary home for now. And it, even even without fans in the stands there in San Jose, the play, whole just the whole aura of it all, like the players would have been, you know, extra juiced to get onto the field, especially since they didn't play Boise State. They had their game canceled or postponed back a couple weeks ago. But still, like, it was it was all set up for them to, you know, host the game and, you know, possibly cement their way into a top bowl game. They need a lot of help to possibly get into the playoff, you know, group of five, power, you know, the power six bowls, or however you call it. But just another, another unfortunate circumstance in this one. Um, and like you said too, even I'm I'm definitely not sleeping on that Sun Belt game, the Fun Belt, if you will. Um, Louisiana Lafayette, very very talented, underrated team. They have been ranked a couple times this year in the AP. But Coastal Carolina win, and you're for sure into one of the uh, 
group of six bowls. So should be interesting. Should be a fun week. Uh, Marco, do you have anything to add? Possibly a top four as to who will be in the playoff come Sunday morning. Hmm. Um, I think Notre Dame can, can really make a push. I, I re, uh, Jasper was just talking about Ian Book. I really like Ian Book. I, I really, he can really sling the ball. Um, I wouldn't be surprised though if that cha- if the championship is like either Clem, uh, not Clemson, Notre Dame. I don't think that would work, but I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame fit, gets in that championship, maybe even winning a championship. Oh, absolutely. They have championship pedigree, and I think Kelly's a very underrated coach. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it will be interesting, though. If Clemson does win, what is the what is the committee looking at all that stuff? But we'll see. Who knows? You know, the games still have to be played and all that. And, you know, who who knows exactly how it's won and how, how it won't be. All right, let's wrap up today. Well, actually, no, we still have our 60-second rants at the end of the show. But let's wrap up our final topic of the day, and it is – the Warriors, they're, they have played already two preseason games. They have split both of them a win against the Nuggets at home. And a Kyle Guy, of all players, winning three for the Kings back on Tuesday. Uh, the, Virgi- the Virginia Cav- Cavalier legend getting the uh, better of the Warriors at least back on Tuesday. So at 1-1, one one, the Warriors, they play their last game, last preseason game against the Kings again tonight. Uh, Thursday night so let's hear from Alvin um, the first time tonight for the first time today actually what have you seen from the Warriors so far and possibly do you have a player who should be making the roster so far who is a little bit on the bubble so uh, we know Warriors received uh, Brett Wanamaker and Kelly Oubre uh, from the free agency but I still worry worry about the, uh, the Warriors in the paint so Warriors have Kevon Looney, Marquise Chris, Draymond Green, and James Wiseman. Well, besides Wiseman, if you look at the size of Looney, Marquise Chris, and Draymond Green, they are too small. We have to look at it uh, defensively and, um, and also their rebound ability. So compete with uh, other big guys, for example, like Marcus Gasol, Anthony Davis, Serge Ibaka. I think the Warriors uh, in the paint just too small. And we know Steve Kerr loves to play run and gun along with transition fast break. But if the Warriors have no rebound, it's difficult to play run and gun or early offense. Plus, I don't think Draymond Green can compete with other forward. Like I said, Marcus Gasol, Sergi Boka, or even Nikola Jokic. So I think Warriors should find another big guy in free agency or package Andrew Wiggins to switch another big guy from other teams. You can ask James Wiseman, you know, to play an average double-double in this season. He's just a rookie, so um, he needs time to get through. And we know, you know, Warriors uh, have a very tough season last year. Their three points uh, field goals average is ranked 29th, and also field goals ranked 28th from last season. And I think Andrew Wiggins uh, should play more aggressive. And also, you know, Brad Wanamaker, he's a steady guy. And Kelly Oubre, he can drive and he can shoot, and that's good. You know, I think Warriors cannot rely, uh, you know, staff to shoot from outside, and other players like Jordan Poole or even Eric uh, Pascal should help the Warriors to play more, you know, aggressive on offensively. And also, you know, this season will be very tough for the Warriors because uh, the Western Conference is very competitive. And when you look at other teams, for example, like Utah Jazz, uh, Portland Trail Blazers, or, you know, uh, New Orleans uh, Pelicans, or even Houston Rockets or Oklahoma Sunders. Plus, as we know, the uh, Phoenix Suns didn't uh, enter to the bubble uh, last, didn't enter to the playoff last season. But they have CP3 uh, from the 
uh, free agency this this year. So I would say the Western Conference is, you know, really competitive uh, in this season. And also, you know, Lakers, Clippers, and also Denver Nuggets. So there's a lot of teams, like, they're ready for playoffs. So if the Warriors want to back to the playoff list, they should play more aggressive. They should find another big guy in free agency. And also, I wish, you know, another swing player can add to the roster. Um, you know, things to play didn't play in this season. And if Warriors want to play the play, if Warriors want to back to playoff, that's what, what they should do. Yeah, you already have your locks as it is in the Western Conference. You have your, both of the L.A. teams, maybe Denver, um, Houston, depending on whether or not they want to get rid of James Harden. That's a story for another day, though. Um, but there, every, it seems like right now the whole Western Conference just seems like, you know, spots four through ten, because remember you do have the added playoff spots this year. This, those spots, they're really up for grabs, and it seems like any anyone can really – take a hold of it early on if they come out to a fast start and I've been saying that all along you know the these first 15 to 20 games are so crucial for the Warriors because you're gonna who knows how these teams that went deep into the bubble are gonna really be playing much of their guys um they see it really it's really still unknown at this point and it all comes down to you know how how close can this team get in terms of chemistry this early on and you know, everyone wants to have Steph have the ball and put up at least 25 a game. He's not always going to be able to do that. So who else can provide some offense for this team? And on the defensive side, can the Andrew Wiggins, the Jordan Pools off the bench, how much can they come and really solidify their defensive mind? And how much do they play James Wiseman too? That's also another question of it because, you know, he's only played a handful of games since high school. And that's that's really the whole point of it. And then at that point as well, what what do you get out of him? Is he going to be giving you double doubles? Is that a little bit too much to ask for? Is he just out there to really be a rim pro, rim protector? It still seems to be said, especially with him not getting any preseason games. There's no way to see how Kerr wants to play him so far. All right. Um, the season does start, though, next Tuesday. Very interesting. See how it all unfolds. And then obviously with Christmas, December 25th being next Friday, a full day of basketball. And even with that one football game in there, the Vikings and Saints, it sure seems to be a fun Christmas when you look at it from a sporting aspect. All right, let's wrap up today's show with our 60-second rants. If you even do want to call it a rant, but still – um, 60 seconds to uh, anyone who wants to uh, throw out a topic. And we'll start today with Marco. Um, if you're ready, hopefully you are. Your 60 seconds start right now. So uh, last week I was talking um, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And this that was last week. And the season is now over. Mercedes is the, is the official champion. Uh, Hamilton has his fifth. But now it's 90 days until the season starts yet again. And right now there is a lot of holes still to be filled. There is one seat in the Red Bull that needs to be filled. Um, obviously, Alex Albin finished fourth in the Abu Dhabi uh, Grand Prix. So that could probably give him a, a leg up in terms of who's going to fill that, that second seat. Also, there's Sergio Perez, who's, who is now a free agent after being released from Racing Point, which will now become Aston Martin. And there is the open seat at Mercedes, which really sure, because Lewis Hamilton's going to sign his contract anyway, so I don't know what they're waiting for. However, I am really excited for this season, next year. Very interesting. It's always nice to get some Formula One in here. But like you said, Lewis Hamilton – the goat of driving these days, especially not just in Formula One, but maybe the entire world. All right, let's hear from Alvin. Um, your 60 seconds start right now. So I want to talk about James Harden. I think he should leave the Houston Rockets. So, you know, after Westbrook trade to the uh, Washington Wizards and CP3 left earlier 
uh, moved to Thunder and right now in the Suns. I think the biggest problem is James Harden because no matter who play together with James Harden, they, they can't get a championship. You can't blame like D'Antoni. You can't blame other players. The problem is James Harden. And right now, John Wall and James Harden, like I believe they, they can't play any chemistry for the Rockets. So I would say it's a stretch uh, with the seven scissors and Ben Simmons to come to the Rockets. And also, uh, if they don't, if James Harden want to stay in the Rockets, like he should play more aggressive and play what he should play. All right, nice. Right before the buzzer. All right, Jasper, uh, your 60 seconds start right now. All right, today I'm coming after the College Football Playoff Committee and their protection of the Big 12. This conference has no reason to be in some of these rankings. Texas is a horrible team. Oklahoma State needs to fire Mike Gundy, and you are just extending these coaches' careers. I don't get why Iowa State and OU are over – Cincinnati, that's ridiculous. Cincinnati is an undefeated team. People always complain that they don't have signature wins, but they do. And you know why? Because they have kept teams in the American Conference out of the top 25. They have beaten these guys down so bad that they can't even get into the top 25. Iowa State will lose to Oklahoma, and the committee is basically just setting it up for them to be in the conversation for the college football playoff, which is utterly ridiculous. I think Cincinnati deserves more respect, and I don't think they'll get it because – well, they're just not in the Power Five, and the Blue Blood programs always get their mark. Yeah, I mean, you kind of, you kind of did take mine, but you know, what the the committee has just been under fire this past week, and rightfully so. It's just some of the, some of the, when you look at it these time, when you look at the rankings this week, it's it's really just mind boggling and disappointing because Cincinnati they do deserve to be in there and they see otherwise. All right, so for my 60 seconds, I will continue on Alvin's point on James Harden. What, what else more can you say about him? You know, you have the, the viral picture of him, you know, not looking so in shape these days. Um, who knows what that's all about? You know, you have the video coming out on, um, what was it, Tuesday or Monday about him put on some shots at the Toyota Center. Looked all right, but when you get to the game, uh, it looks completely different. And, you know, to piggyback on what Tim McMahon was saying in the ESPN article put out a couple days ago, too, um, he just really seems like a legend. Um, you know, you have a couple days in between games, and here I am going to charter a private jet, and I'm just going to go fly out to different cities and party. I mean, hey, why not? You're in, You're making all that money. You're you're a guaranteed bucket whenever you're on the whenever you're on the court. James Harden living life. Um, everyone says Clay Thompson has the best NBA life. Well, over the past few days, I'm taking James Harden, who has the best NBA lifestyle on and probably off the court as well. And we'll leave it at that. Um, thanks for tuning into TSV's show. Uh, make sure to go out and check out our latest PDF uh, issue of the Skyline View dropped um yesterday spent a lot of hard man hours on the on that so it's nice to take a look at it every now and then um uh, make sure to also follow the, t the skyline view on twitter and instagram and um we will not, not to be not to uh be seen yet if we have a show next week or not we will keep you posted on twitter whether or not we do have a show next week, but thanks for watching TSV Sports Show, and we might we might possibly see you next week. <laughs>